Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Master. Jesus, that's his name. Everybody praise the Lord. My name is Reverend Debisino Koko. In a very short period, I will uh, introduce myself. I'm a minister of the gospel, but hang on. Today we are continuing our study series, the Holy Spirit classes. And today's lesson is very important. It's core, it's C-O-R-E, to the whole class, to the entire lessons of the Holy Spirit classes of class. That you have to pay very good attention, otherwise you might you would miss out on the essential parts. Hallelujah. Um, I am broadcasting. That's the word. I am teaching the word of God. I am inspiring us from this book, the Holy Bible, from a point, from a place in Houston, Texas. You can see right behind me there. This church is West Timer Community Church, Unity of the Brethren. It's a community church. What is a community church? That is an assignment for you to find out. Um, this is where I'll be teaching from today and I'll be moving around because I, I, I might just have to work out, you know, just exercise a little bit. So, so that's an introduction of our lesson today. Uh, let me tell you about myself. I am a teacher of the world. I teach the word of God. I believe I have the gift of teaching according to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 8 to 11. The Bible says, When Jesus Christ ascended on high, he gave the death captivity captive. That means he conquered what needs to be conquered. And he gave it to men. He gave it to you know, apostles, some prophets. And that scripture continues down there. You will see that somewhere there it mentions teachers. Praise the Lord. I am one of them. Now, I also teach. I teach in a Sunday school class in a church in Houston, which time you know the church is a very popular big Pentecostal church. I handle a class. I teach a class. I could teach a class. So we, I do quite some things to help the work of God. I am also um, a facilitator of the International School of Ministry. The International School of Ministry, Greater Houston. I am actually the facilitator of the International School of Ministry, Greater Houston. It is a, a part of the International School of Ministry, which is, you know, the world's largest video school, video Bible school, spread across 100, spread across 160 countries plus. About 40,000 training centers at the last count. Uh, our school is one of the training centers. Hallelujah. Let us pray now. After we have prayed, then we will run a short promo about our school and then we will begin our class. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this opportunity you have given us to study this word, to study the Bible. You said, you told us, you said, be ye unwise, not knowing what the will of God is, but be filled by the Spirit. He said, when you know the will of God, Father, you told us that it is not good for us not to know the will of God. So we have to know the will of God and the will of God comes from the word of God, the book. Thank you, Jesus. Be ye not unwise, not knowing what the will of the Lord is. But be filled with the Spirit. If I one place say, be ye dr not drunk with wine, wear in essence, but be filled with the Spirit. You know what the word of God, the will of God is that we know this book. Amen. We know the word of God. We know the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and we get filled with Him because when we walk in the Spirit, says, what scripture says, walk in the Spirit and you will not be, you will not fulfill the desire of the flesh. When we spend more time studying the things of God, living in the Spirit of God, we will, hallelujah, be filled with the Spirit. So let us use this chance right now to run this Bible school promo. Amen. Get your ministry degree and start your future with ISOM Online. The International School of Ministry is the largest video Bible college in the world with over 330,000 students in 150 nations. 
For more than 25 years, we've produced dynamic training videos with the world's most influential Christian leaders, the best of the best, all selected for their exceptional ability to teach. Our expertly crafted courses are designed to help you discover your purpose and calling, become effective in ministering to others, and transform your life for the better. Sign up today and you'll get instant access to our library of over 200 exciting courses that you can view online at your convenience, on your time. There's no more affordable, enjoyable way to earn your ministry degree. Get your degree from the comfort of home. Earn your degree and start power learning with the life-changing benefits of the International School of Ministry. The International School of Ministry. Be more. Praise the Lord. We are here, we are back at the other side. That school is our school and we, you know, use that tool, the school, to equip believers like you and me to prepare for the work of God. Bible trainings, credentials, ministerial credentials, I'm talking about degrees, certificates, diplomas, associate degree, bachelor's degrees, and the rest, and what have you. Hallelujah. So, I am going to be walking about as I teach. Let's, this is very paramount. This lesson, to me, is the most important lesson in this Holy Spirit classes. Because if you don't get it, you will be, you know, stuck. Amen. Today, we are going to be talking about the gift of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gift, or what we call the spiritual gifts. Amen. That's why in the Bible... Apostle Paul was writing to the church, and I believe he still writes, he's writing to you also. When he writes to the church, he's writing to the church today. You are a member of the church. Perhaps you are not. I invite you to come and join us. Come and taste the glory that comes from being a part of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. Paul says, Be ye, he says, concerning spiritual gifts. Concerning spiritual gift, I guess it's in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12. Amen. First book of Corinthians, chapter 12. I want you to open your Bible. By the way, we are in a cross street, and as you hear some noise, do not be dismayed by the noise, because we are standing on a cross street, and we have vehicles moving. We have passers by moving. Paul says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you what? Ignorant. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. The same thing that Paul says is the same thing I tell you. Brethren, listeners, viewers, whoever is listening, watching, concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you what? Ignorant. Now I was, you must know about spiritual gifts. You must want to know what this gift. Perhaps you have been in churches, you have been in places. Where they keep talking about this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is it all about? Maybe you know one of them, you know two, you know three of them, you know four, or you might even know six of them. What about the rest? Hallelujah. We are going to start teaching it today, and my prayer is that God will expand your knowledge so that you know what gift is what and what it operates. Amen. I'm not going to read so long a scripture, but to begin with, let me enumerate those spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. I'm going to start from verse 8. You know, if you have time, read from verse 2 to 7. I just read First Corinthians, that's where we are still. I read to you verse 1. Now, you read verse 2 to 7. But then I'm going to start from verse 8, where it begins to list the spiritual gifts. Amen. It is still the same Apostle Paul writing. He says what? He says, for to one is given. For to somebody is given by the Spirit, by the Spirit, not by a human being, not by your, your pastor, not by your mother. He says, for to one is given by the Spirit. That's why it's called spiritual gift. Why is this called spiritual gift? It's called spiritual gift because it is a gift. When somebody gives you a gift, you do not have to pay. You do not have to pay dollars. You do not have to pay naira. You do not have to pay pan sterling. Hallelujah. You do not have to pay Latvian lat. Hallelujah. That's another currency you might want to know about. He says, concerning spiritual gift, I will not have you what? Ignorant. Then he begins to say, for to one is given by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, to another person. 
the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is another gift of the spirit. Remember, we just read the other one. The word of wisdom is the first. The word of knowledge it says by the same spirit. So there are no two spirits, there are no two Holy Spirit. It is one Holy Spirit. First, by the way, we are going to spend some time to talk about the Holy Spirit because that's another lesson. You know, we talk about the gift, we talk about you know the fruit of the spirit. But who is this spirit? Hallelujah. That's another lesson we're gonna have some time. I'm going to be drawing my materials this morning from two resources. You know, I read a book many years ago, The Holy Spirit and His Gift. It might interest you to also want to read that book. It is a book written by uh, our brother, the late Reverend Kenneth E. Hagen. Reverend E. Hagen has gone to be with the Lord. But his work still stands out. Amen. His work still stands out. The book talks about virtually the book is entitled The Holy Spirit and his gift the holy spirit and his gift that's one book we're going to be using there's another book the gifts with an s and the ministries of the holy spirit amen this book is written by another man of god a great man of god his name is lester sumro lester sumro most, most of us know about him He's going to be i guess going to be with the lord I watch him a couple of times. I watch him on internet. I watch him on the World Network. A very powerful man of God. Now that book, these two books, I was able to. Start, I, I got. I got through this book because the other one was the first book, the Holy Spirit and His Gifts, and this one is the Gifts and Ministries of the Holy Spirit. I decided to sit down and read two of them and bring out similarities and differences, and that's what we are going to be discussing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back. First of all, let's finish up the in, enumerating the gifts. Remember, I started, it says in verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, to another faith by the same spirit. Now, this faith that is mentioned here is not the faith that you know the Bible says, by faith unto every man is dealt with a measure of faith. It's, it's not that one. He says, he has faith to be healed. It's not that faith. This one is called the gift of faith. The gift of faith is a faith that is given to you and me, believers. So that when we trust God in such a way, when, you know, somebody can believe God for something, I will not happen. Another man will believe God for something, and that thing will happen. Now, this gift is a gift that God gives people so that, these people believe God in a special way. Hallelujah. You believe God in a special way so that every, anything they're asking for, asking God for. Hallelujah. It works. Anything. You know, they ask God for something in such a way that that thing will never fail to happen. It must happen. Hallelujah. We are still in that church. Remember? We're still my community church. But. Inside that, inside this church, you can see behind me, it looks like there is another church right there. It's a Hispanic church, so probably in this building there are two churches called Iglesia Evangelica Shalom. Servicio Domingo, 12.30, you know, Sunday service, that's Spanish for those of us. 12.30 p.m., and that's their telephone number right here. So we will, we will camp here a little bit and finish up. What well, we are studying, hallelujah. To another faith by the same spirit, verse 9, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. To another, hallelujah, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. You know, I want you to note that he keeps talking about by the same spirit, by the same spirit, by the same Why is he talking about by the same spirit? He's talking about by the same spirit because he wants you to know that the Holy Spirit is one. There are no two Holy Spirits, amen. Hallelujah. And remember, it's called the Holy Spirit. It's God, the third person. Verse 10, to another, the walking of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. And that's where it ends a list of them. Verse 10, when you count them, there are about nine of them. 
Let me reiterate. Let me mention the nine, and then we will be able to pick it out. It says, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Let's go back to verse 8. The word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, that's two. To another faith, or the gift of faith, that's three. To another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, that's four. Remember it says the gifts, with an S, plural. There are gifts of healing. There are different types of healing gifts. Let me give you an example before we digress or before we even forget to mention it for it, it, it finally. When Jesus Christ called Lazarus from the dead, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, that's the gift of gifts of healing in operation. Let me tell you why it's a gift of healing. When Lazarus died, his spirit, you know, for a man to die, that means his spirit leaves his body, goes somewhere, goes to God, goes who knows, go to Satan if they are unsafe. Now, when Lazarus died, his spirit left his body. Amen. That is death. The man is dead. Hallelujah. And then his body was there. Remember? His body has decayed. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ delayed his journey to go to, I guess, Mary and Martha. He said, Lord, if you have been there, our brother will not have died. Hallelujah. Bible says you know, the journey was delayed. So by the time somebody has died, the journey has been delayed. You know, you may leave somebody that his body begins to decay. Amen. Now, when Jesus showed up, guess what happened? He said, Lazarus, come forth. He called this man's spirit. Now, this might this might sound ridiculous. This might not, you might not, you might open your beliefs. This thing might make you tremble. This thing might make you begin to. You know, he says, Lazarus, come forth. Where was he calling him from? I don't know where Lazarus was, but the body was lying down there. But he said, Lazarus, wherever you are, come from there and enter this body. Now, what does that tell you? It means that spirits can be called. I'm not going to go too deep into what other things I do not know. But from the Bible, you can call a spirit back. If, if a dead man dies... You can call his spirit. I don't know where his spirit is hovering from or he's resting at or he's doing that. You can call that spirit to come back and he's going to enter that body. The same way people call spirit. They call other people's spirit. They can call your spirit to leave your body. They can call your spirit to come back. Jesus showed us an example. Amen. When Lazarus came forth, when Lazarus came forth, he entered into that body. Amen. He entered into that body. And when he entered that body, that is miracle one. It's a gift of healing. He has healed a dead man. A dead man is alive. Amen. To call somebody's spirit to move from where he was and to come down to where a body was, that's a miracle. That's a gift. That is supernatural. You know, I, I'm not going to talk too much. I don't know much about the spirit realm, but, but to bring a spirit by speaking, by calling, that's, that's, that's supernatural. You can't explain it. Amen. And now when that spirit came, he entered the man. Amen. He entered Lazarus. Guess what? Immediately the spirit entered Lazarus. Lazarus opens his eyes. That is another gift of healing. That's another healing. To wake up a dead man who has been dead for three days. Probably he sneezed. He coughed. And you know when he woke up, he might have become hungry. He wants to eat. That's miracle. That's, that's, that's awesome. And guess what again? This man has been away from by his spirit for three good days. His body has begun to... Don't you think the body will be healed? There have been sores, blisters, decays. The dead man died, roasted. But when he came back, his body began to you know, reheal. All those wounds, microbes have attacked his body. Bacteria. He begins to wither. The body begins to heal. So three, three, three gifts of healing in one miracle. Amen. So that's why he says there to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another. So that brings you to how many? You know, one, two, three, four. That brings you to four. To another the working of miracles. That's five. To another prophecy. That's six. To another, the standing of spirit, that's seven. To another, diverse kinds of tongues, 
That's it. Go another the interpretation of tongues. That's nine. Hallelujah. I guess I'm correct. Word of wisdom one, word of knowledge two, faith three, gifts of healing four, walking and miracles five, prophecy six, discerning of spirit seven, diverse kinds of tongues eight, and the interpretation of tongues nine. Praise the Lord. So I have listed them, and this is the, this is going to form this foundation of our study as we begin to move. Now there are nine gifts. Nice spiritual gift. Amen. We're going to be moving a little bit, like I told us. Nice spiritual gifts. Nice spiritual gifts. These gifts, these nine gifts, can be classified. They can be classified into three categories. Three categories. Three categories. These are part of what we discover from our uh, lesson materials. Three categories for these gifts. There are gifts that say something. In other words, they use your mouth. You must speak. I'm going to enumerate them. Hallelujah. Once I have finished enumerating them, I am going to... Uh, classify them. I mean, like, there are nine of them, and there are three groups. What does that tell us? It tells us that there are three, three gifts. There are three, three gifts in every group. One group is made up of three. And that's what we are going to be studying. That's what we are going to be looking at right now. Amen. That's the group called the Revelation Gift, they reveal something. Hallelujah. They reveal something. And one of them is the word of knowledge. Another one is the word of word of wisdom. We're, we're gonna, we are going to mention them in the order we read them in the Bible. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8. The word of wisdom is a revelation gift. The word of knowledge is a revelation gift. The discerning of spirits. It's a revelation gift. Praise the Lord. There are also the gifts that do something. They call, we call them the power gifts. They, 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 they enable you to exercise power, authority. I'm going to mention them. The gifts of faith. Remember I just told us the story of Lazarus being risen from the dead. It takes power to do all that. It takes power to call a dead man to life. It takes power For a, a, a man's body to heal. It takes power for a man's spirit to enter his body. That is one of the power gifts. The working of miracles. Miracles. There are so many miracles in the Bible, I can't begin to mention one of them, but it, it's a demonstration of power. To make a lame man walk. One place in the Bible, the Bible says, why Paul was speaking, he saw that this man had faith to be healed. There was a certain man who was listening to him. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that man had faith to be healed. That man had faith to be healed. By the way, I am recording us on the street. And, uh, yes. The Bible said that man had faith to be healed. And then Paul, looking at him, said, right, young man, take up that stick and walk. And the man began to walk. Praise the Lord. The man began to walk. So the walking of miracles is one of the revelation gifts. There is another gift, the gift of healing. Remember, there is an S, it's plural, because healing involves a lot. I, excuse me, I... It's like I mistaught us. The gift of healing is, a demonst is demonstrated in the story of Lazarus, the gift of healing. The gift of faith uh, I, ha I don't have an immediate example, but I'm going to give us that as we go along. Now, there are inspiration gifts. You know, when you get filled with the Spirit of God, you begin to speak 
One of them is the gift of prophecy. Prophecy, we are going to explain it a little bit shortly. The Bible says, He that prophesy speaketh men unto edification, unto exhortation, and unto comfort. Somewhere in the Bible, I think it's still in the first book of Corinthians, I think, chapter 14. I'm going to go look at it. First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? It says, But he that prophesied speaketh unto men. By the way, I am reading King James Version of the Bible. Most of us like to read other versions. I like to read King James. It says, He that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Now, this is what prophecy does, the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is different from the office of the prophet. This is an utterance gift, a gift that enables us to speak. Amen? Hallelujah. There is another gift in this class called inspiration gift. It's called the diverse kinds of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. Ability to speak different languages when you pray. Ability to speak different languages when you sing songs unto the Lord. Ability to bubble. You can use the word bubble. When you open your mouth, you begin to say things that don't that say words that don't really make sense or to you, but make sense to another man. Elsewhere in London, elsewhere in Mongolia, elsewhere in Republic of Ireland, elsewhere in China, elsewhere in Japan, elsewhere in Nicosia, Cyprus, Cyprus, elsewhere in Greece, anywhere your language is not spoken. I speak English, amen, by the grace of God. I speak little German. Sprachen Sie heute Deutsche. Ich spreche ein bitte. I speak French a little bit. Je parle français un peu, un peu. I speak Italian a little bit. Por relacte italiano. I speak little Russian, spasiba. I speak little Igbo. I have more with Davidson, Reverend Davidson. And then I speak fluent English. We are bringing you the word of God in English. Now, I can go elsewhere. I can be in, a, in, a, in, a, in an art, in, 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 in an atmosphere, praying, singing songs. And then I begin to speak some things that I, my mind does not understand. That's why the Bible says, if I, if I, if I speak in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. My spirit prays. Well, my understanding is unfruitful. My understanding does not get it. Yes, how can you get it? You can't get it because that language you are speaking is not your language. It could be Portuguese. It could be a language of, it could be Arabian language, it could be any language. But, if the Arabian were there, the Arabian will understand what you are saying. And that's how you magnify God, because God will use your mouth to speak to the Arabian. God will use your mouth, your language, to speak, because you don't know how to speak Portuguese. Then the Portuguese is nearby. What, guess what will happen? The Holy Spirit will manifest you. will just inspire you and then all of a sudden you begin to speak what to be. Now, these are one, that is one of the gifts that speaks. Interpretation of tongues. It is with corporate worship. Interpretation of tongues means in a congregation where people are gathered, in a church, in a prayer meeting, the Spirit of God can begin to flow through one man and he begins to prophesy. The Bible says that he that prophesied speaketh unto men for edification, for exhortation and comfort. He is speaking for, he is comforting the church. He is bringing in the word of God. He is telling them that God is with you. He is lifting them up. But he is speaking in another language. He is speaking in diverse kinds of thoughts. God will also put words in another brother's heart, mouth, another sister's mouth. In that same church, in that same gathering. And that one will begin to interpret 
It's called the interpretation, not the trans not translation. And he'll begin to say, oh, that's what the Lord is speaking to that brother. That's what the Lord is speaking to that sister. The Lord is telling us. The Lord is telling this church. The Lord is telling somebody called Brother X. The Lord is telling somebody called Sister Y that this is this. That is that. Amen. That is the gift of the gratification of God. Brothers and sisters, we are almost coming to an end, but we have not even started. We are ending this episode very soon. What are we saying? We have first of all introduced ourselves to the spiritual gifts of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit spiritual gift. We were able to mention them as outlined in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, from verse 8. I think by the end of the day, we should have mentioned that. There are about nine of them, and we find out that there are three groups of them. They could be grouped into three. One of them is the gifts that reveals. There are gifts that God uses to show you things. There are gifts that, you know, empower you. They, they give you power, and you begin to make this happen. There are gifts that inspire you. They give you utterances, and we're able to group them. Amen? Next week, next episode, we're going to be talking about more of this. We're going to define them. In fact, let me begin to define them right now. And then, by our next episode, we will begin to expand the definition. Hallelujah. The word of wisdom is a supernatural gift given by God to tell us things that will happen in the future. In fact, one, the, the material I used, the Holy Spirit I did, he said, it's a revelation by the Holy Spirit of, of the plans and purposes of God. In other words, God is telling you what He plans to do with you, for you, your community, your nation, in time to come. Amen. You know, Daniel had this gift operating a lot in him. Paul had this gift. But one time, the Paul was trying to sell with them. He said, Brethren, I perceive that this journey will not be without help. He had perceived it. He didn't say it's a revelation, but deep inside his spirit, he, he felt that something ahead. Hallelujah. It's about the future. What is the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge tells us something about the present and something about the past. What is the difference between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge? It's about time. The word of wisdom tells you about the future. The word of knowledge tells you about right now and in the past. Amen. It's a revelation. It comes. We're going to talk about how it comes. That's another episode. Like I told us, this is the call. This spiritual gift lesson is the core of everything I'm talking about in this Holy Spirit class. There's another one, the gift of faith. I told us, the gift of faith is the gift, the revelation, the empowerment, but the, 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 the supernatural gift the Holy Ghost gives you to believe in God in such a way that everything you want will happen. Remember Elijah, when he said, Lord, show these people that you are God and all that. And the Bible says, fire fell from heaven. You know, how many people can call fire from heaven? Many times, not even one time. At one time, if you go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, 2 Kings chapter 1 or 2, let me just be sure, I don't want to. In 2 Kings, amen, praise the Lord, 2 Kings chapter 2, I think it's chapter 2. Well, I'm not going to read too long. The Bible says, Ahaziah fell off a lattice. That was the king. Ahaziah was the son of Ahab. Amen. Well, I'm not going to... I have so much... If I were to continue to read Second Kings... Oh, 2 Kings chapter 1. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings. The Bible says, Ahaziah fell off a lattice. In verse 2, Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber. We are not going to read all that. But what I'm trying to bring out, in that 2 Kings chapter 2, chapter 1, they sent soldiers to arrest, arrest Elijah, the man of God. And guess what? When they came near, he said, If I be not a man of God, if if I'm a truly a man of God, let fire fall from heaven and devour you. The Bible says immediately fire fell from heaven and devoured that captain and his feet. 51 people got there by fire. The, the king sent another group. He said, if I be not a man of God. You know, every time he calls fire, fire falls. In fact, that reminds me, one message by a, a popular man of God. 
Pastor E. A. Adeboye. He came to Houston. I was there. And the message or the title of that gathering was Let the Fire Fall. And anytime I remember that message, the theme, Let the Fire Fall, I remember Elijah. Elijah has so many fire, so much fire ministry, so much fire incidences working in his ministry. This man would just open his mouth and call fire fire. At one time, remember the prophets of Baal, the 450 prophets of Baal. After he has made the altar, put the stones, watered it, you know, just to pour water. He poured water. How many people will make fire light with water? No. If you take a, a gallon of water and pour everywhere and try to strike a match, it will not light. It will not light. What will it do? Water will quench fire. But this man of God, to show you that this is not just natural, it is supernatural. He has to pour water everywhere. And then he called the Lord of heaven and said, The Bible said the fire of God fell. Fire from nowhere. He was not struck by a matchstick. How many of us can produce light without a matchstick? I know that you can focus your hand lens on a piece of paper and concentrate solar power and the light will start, you know, the, the paper will start burning, but it's just, there is a tool. The magnifying glass is a tool and inside that magnifying glass, there is something, I don't know much about optics, this is physics. The, 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 the object has a way to focus solar energy, insulation directly on the paper and the paper will catch fire. But this man of God called Elijah, he did not have a magnifying glass, hallelujah. He just used his voice. Now that is an example of the gift of faith. Amen. We are going to end this. Let us pray. Father, thank you because of this session you have given us. You know, to study this book, to know a little, to know what we need to know about spiritual gift. You said in, through Apostle Paul, he talks to the church then, he still talks to us today. He says, concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. We will not be ignorant. Amen. Father, the little we have gathered, let it be retained so that we can grow from there in our work with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My name is Reverend David Sinokoko. I'm the facilitator of the International School of Ministry, Greater Houston, and I'm also a Sunday school teacher in a Pentecostal Biblical Church. Praise the Lord. Amen.